Hi ladies, Shannon here and thanks for joining us for Wednesdays in the Word. Recently I had an opportunity to take a road trip. Now as far as highway road trips goes, this is a pretty scenic one as it's taking me from Mackay up the coast back home to Mareeba in far north Queensland. There are sections of the road where it just grazes the coastline and you catch glimpses of the ocean. There are other sections where the highway is completely dappled with shade as trees hem you in on the left. And the right. As I was driving along fairly early in the morning I noticed a large mountain range on the horizon and feeling a bit daunted by the drive ahead I thought to myself I wonder how long it's going to take me just to get over past or through that mountain range. But my attention was quickly diverted as one of my favourite hill song songs came up on the playlist and I got distracted in my own private prayer and praise session right there on the Bruce Highway. After what would only been an hour or so, I happened to glance in my rear view mirror and I saw that that mountain range was long gone behind me. And it occurred to me that the mountains hadn't moved at all, but I had. My mind moved to ponder the verse from Matthew where Jesus talks about moving mountains. We can find Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 17. In verse 14, we meet the father of a demon-possessed boy who brings his son to Jesus after the disciples had been unable to heal him. Jesus rebukes the demon, heals the boy, and then afterwards in private his disciples come to him and ask, them, ask him why they couldn't drive the demon out. In verse 20, Jesus responds with these words. You don't have enough faith, Jesus told them. I tell you, if you had faith even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there and it would move. Nothing would be impossible for you. Well, I have no doubt that Jesus can in fact move literal mountains just as he calmed literal storms. Bible commentaries generally agree that the expression Jesus, is, Jesus uses is an Eastern hyperbole, meaning that through faith we can overcome difficulties that would otherwise be insurmountable. This interpretation seems to be in line with 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 2 as the author echoes the sentiment once again referring to a faith that is able to move mountains. What really strikes me about both of these verses is what it is that actually moves mountains. It isn't fixating or focusing intently on them. I don't know about you but often when I come up against a difficulty or issue in my life that seems insurmountable I can't stop thinking about it. While I'm driving, while I'm working, even at 4am in the morning when I really should be sleeping. I look at it from all different angles coming up with what I think are the best solutions. The thing is it doesn't usually solve anything or help my mountain move at all. I also like to talk about my mountains, seeking ideas and advice from my husband, my friends and my family. Teenage girls can be surprisingly insightful sometimes. While this often lifts the heaviness on my heart, rarely does it do anything to cause movement to my seemingly insurmountable obstacles. So what is it that does in fact give us the ability to move mountains? Faith. And not even a lot of faith, but even just the smallest amount of faith. Jesus says, I tell you, if you have the faith as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. Now, why we may be inclined to read this verse and think, well, if I have enough faith, I can do anything, anything at all. But the thing about faith is that it isn't a magic wand or a golden lamp. I don't believe that Jesus' words, or his life for that matter, indicate to us that faith is a tool that we can use to get whatever it is on our wish list. If that was the case, I'd definitely be taller, with a singing voice like Kari Job. This year, I've really enjoyed listening to the teaching of Pastor Andy Stanley from North Point Church in the U.S., Recently, he was talking about a friend of his who had passed away. 
Despite the fact that they'd all prayed for a miracle, he had not been healed and yet his faith stood solid to the day he died because he understood that his faith didn't reverse the consequences of life in a fallen world. As Pastor Andy Stanley put it, faith is not a superpower. Faith is not how we get God to do something that he wasn't going to do in the first place. Faith is a response to the faithfulness of our Heavenly Father. Faith is a response to the faithfulness of our Heavenly Father. So where does that leave us when we're on the highway of life and the mountains appear on our horizon? It leaves us in the capable hands of our Heavenly Father. It leaves us to press into Him, lean on His Word and have faith in Him and His promises to us. And if we find our faith faltering, we can take a leaf out of the disciples' book and ask God to increase our faith. We might find that God will indeed take our mountains and cast them into the sea. But we may also find that he takes our hand, he takes our heart and leads us on the slow and sometimes tedious trek over, around or through life's mountain ranges that would otherwise be impossible for us to overcome. If we can divert our attention from the insurmountable obstacles in front of us and fix our eyes on him, continuing to pray and praise in the midst of adversity, then sooner or later we may just find ourselves looking in the rear view mirror and finding our mountains well and truly behind us.